Great American Gardener, the show where you ask the questions about gardening and we try and give the answers. I'm Shane Coulter. I'm from Country Arbors Nursery in Urbana and Culture Nurseries in Onarga, Illinois. And I kind of have a general knowledge about a little bit about everything. I grow plants. I work with plants. I install them. I've done a little bit of everything over the years. So I, I'm going to kind of hang out and if, chime in every once in a while. But they've given me a great panel today of people that I even hang out with outside of the panel out here to, uh, this evening. But uh, we have some great people, and I wanted them to introduce themselves and tell us uh, a little bit about their expertise and then maybe have a show and tell or a question. And I'll start off with Bill. Thank you. Um, I'm Bill Erickson. I'm a landscape architect in the Champaign-Urbana area, and uh, I love to work with uh, residential-sized uh, landscapes. Uh, I do some work with water gardening and uh, gardening for wildlife. And I really enjoy the, the smaller details in the landscape, especially uh, backyard gardens and that type of thing. Thank you. Can you, you had a little show and okay. tell for us? Yeah, I've got uh, a show and tell here today uh, with uh, some zinnias. These are annual flowers, and um, they are uh, uh, fairly new in the market. They've been around, I, I believe, about 10 years. Um, but they're one of my favorites. I plant them every year. And this is Profusion Zinnia. You can see that there's a lot of colors represented here. Uh, I've got several of them. There's yellow as well and, and light pink, uh, kind of a light orange as well. And uh, these are very easy flowers to grow. Uh, they're summer tolerant in Illinois uh, in the Midwest uh, where you get some hot summer days and high humidity and they'll still thrive. They do need uh, good drainage, uh, so be sure that you have a good uh, organic soil to plant them in, uh, not a heavy clay soil. Uh, they like a lot of full sun, hot sun, and they'll do quite well in those conditions. Uh, the flowers will fade a little bit as the summer goes along, but you can do a little bit of deadheading if you want to keep the, uh, the color intensity um, uh, high, but um, a lot of people like that color mix with the fading colors. Now this is another type of uh, zinnia uh, called Zahara, and this is a starlight variety. It's very similar. Uh, it has a little bit larger flower though, about 20% larger. These were used at the uh, Summer Olympic Games in Beijing, China. So they're, they're a popular uh, variety here now on the market as well. And uh, there are other varieties, uh, Nihai zinnia is another good one for the uh, small garden. And all of these will attract butterflies. So if you like wildlife in the garden and, and uh, want to get a little extra activity there with, with butterflies, it's a good one to put in. Yeah, it's, it's becoming one of my favorite flowers. It's so easy to grow, and you can see just from your, your jar there, it's got a ton of color. So mm -hmm. thanks. Thanks for bringing those this evening. You bet. And Kaizad, you had to uh, introduce yourself first of all, <laughs> all right. and then a little question, I guess. Hello, I'm Kaizad Arani. I am uh, also a landscape architect and uh, am the uh, program director for the Horticulture and Landscape Design Department at Parkland College, and I also teach a course at the University of Illinois. Um, so I'm blessed to have, uh, you know, straddled the fence there. And uh, also my interests are in, in design, working again with uh, residential designs, also primarily, of course, teaching. Uh, I do not have a show and tell, but I have uh, a question here. Uh, this is with regards to Vinca. Apparently, the question is that uh, uh, you've had Vinca growing in um, uh, under a tree or uh, smaller, uh, small areas, and you want to get rid of Vinca and try something else. Question was, how do you do that? Well, uh, this can be somewhat tricky because, again, you can mow it, as some people like to do, or you can, the better way would be to actually try to dig out as much of the root mass as possible, but still, uh, these things are pretty prolific growers, so rest assured you will be working on it on and off. But then try to, if you want to replace it with something else, or something that is a little bit more prolific, uh, or some other uh, perennials depending on the location. So uh, vinca, I mean, it's not a bad plant to have, but I can see if you're looking for some change. Uh, the other really quick question on was about Rose of Sharon, apparently with regards to blooming. Uh, sometimes, yes, they do have issues, but also personally, um, this is uh, quoting from personal experience, uh, Rose of Sharon, you've got to be careful because of their, their, it's, a, it's a wonderful plant, don't get me wrong, but with the seed pods, they scatter, <laughs> glorious laughing, smiling. Um, had issues with just the little uh, plants growing all over the place. So be careful where you plant them, and uh, so be it. 
All right. Thank you again. And one more panelist, but last but not least, <laughs> you can introduce yourself and then go to your question. I'm Gloria Young, and I have been a master gardener for Vermillion County for about the last 18 years. Uh, my specification is mostly plant identification and perennials. That's what I do a lot of. I have one question here. Colorful flowers. A lady said they moved into a new house and they have a strip of soil that's 12 feet long, 16 inches wide, very little sun, and she's wanting something to plant in there for some color. You didn't say whether you wanted annuals or perennials, so I'm going to give you perennials. Uh, hosta, of course, is a shade a loving plant, doesn't have the greatest flowers, except for a couple that smell very, very good. But they offer a lot of color, and you get so many different kinds of hostas. And we have pulmonarias, lung warts, there are um, spider warts. All of these do have flowers, and they're very attractive, and they would really do well in a shaded area. All right, yeah, it's a pretty open-ended question. You yeah. could, we could have had a whole show just on what to plant there. You got but that those right. are all great choices, especially the hosta. That's about as easy as you get, so. All right, well, another way to to be part of our show and you actually can be part of the show is to send in a video question. We do take videos where you ask a question and we're going to go to one right now and see if our panelists can answer that question. So this is our maple tree that we got from a nursery and had planted a couple years ago and it's looking pretty good until you get around to this side and yes, this is the south, so I thought maybe it was sun scald and, and the base of the tree got a crack. And then as I got closer, it seemed in a short period of time, we've got the bark coming away. And I'm assuming that that's insect, insect damage. And it goes all the way up and stops at about the first branch. So it looks pretty bad and don't know if there's anything we can do to save the tree or perhaps we should just cut it down. But we planted several young trees on our property and I'm concerned that whatever happened to this tree uh, might happen to our others. So thank you very much for your help. We appreciate it. All right. Anybody have any ideas? I've seen that in several other um, trees in our neighborhood. And uh, I think we yeah, were I mean, talking we, about that early I, on. Yeah. Unfortunately, I get to see this too yeah. often. <laughs> it's At first, I was going to say it was a maple bore was my first. But then after seeing the video for a long time, it's it actually looks like it's split open. Yeah. And, and that might be mm -hmm. sun scald. Mm -hmm. And two winters ago, in central Illinois, in this region, we had a period where the snow stayed and we got hot and cold. And with that snow staying there, it burst almost every, I shouldn't say every, but it burst probably 10% of red sunset maples yeah. on the southwest side. That's pretty long crack. Um, it could be boars. You'd have to see if it's crumbly. I always say, I tell people if it's sun scald, it looks like it burst open. If it's maple boars, it looks like it was something underneath and it's starting to sink in. It's hard to tell from that video. Mm -hmm. That was uh, that was not your Galaxy phone video, Kaiza. That was a little less quality. <laughs> but uh, I would think it's definitely one of those two as far as treatment. Uh, sun scald, there's not much you can do other than wrap it for the winter to try and prevent that from happening again. The key to the whole thing is to look at the top of the tree. And if all that's going on in the trunk, but the top still looks good, that means it's actually healing itself and doing a good job. For bugs, uh, we use imidacloprid to treat that for borers, and that seems to do a good job holding off the bore so that the, the tree will just heal itself. It looks awful, but eventually will heal up, and in 10 mm -hmm. years, you won't notice the trunk will be all mature. And, well, it, and it just, the wrap, sometimes you gotta, I mean, there's, there's two sides to that too, because sometimes people don't want the wrap as it could trap moisture and other things within there, so it depends, you know, if you do it early. But at that phase, I probably wouldn't recommend a wrap on that. Yeah, not mm -hmm. till winter, perhaps. Right, I, I don't right. think you're gonna burn it anymore, so I right. think, it's, yeah. you know, if you got a yeah. crash car, you don't have to worry about so <laughs> no. much damage, so <laughs> yeah. I think that's where we're going. And if you'd like to email your video emails, you can send it to yourgarden at gmail.com. 
and you, she didn't show her face, but if you'd like to be a star, you're welcome to put your face and ask a question for us, and maybe we'll see you next week and answer your question. All right, well, this is the time of the show you've been waiting for. This is the time where we go to the phone calls. We're going to go ahead and start with our first phone call, line two, with a question about rose bushes. Are you ready for us? Yes, I'm ready. All right, what's your question this evening? Well, um, we're in a Paxton area, just north of you, and there's a lot of people up here. We've got older rose bushes, and the, they're blooming, but they uh, the leaves have all fell off of them. And they're just like um, just just the stem sticking up. The leaves are all gone, but they're still blooming. Hmm. I don't know if they're going to die or what's going to happen to them. Did the leaves turn black? No. They just... turn yellow and fall off. Okay. They're on the ground. Yeah. No <laughs> bugs. I've sprayed them with seven. Mm -hmm. I've put um, oh, a, a fungicide on them, but nothing seems to work. And you haven't seen any insect activity at all on, no. on the plant? I sure mm -hmm. haven't. Are they a pink bloom, like a uh, a single pink flower? Uh, yeah, they're a single rose. They're red, and they're, I got oh. red, and I got yellow, and a peach. The only thing I can see is there maybe a hybrid tea rose that just has gotten such bad, you know, disease on the leaves that they just flat out yeah. dropped. It's been mm -hmm. fairly humid lately, but I, I haven't seen as much leaf spot as I have. But the older roses that had some issues, that's the first thing they do is drop their leaves. I don't think that'll kill the rose. Uh, not if I it's mean, blooming. Just, yeah, yeah. I mean, you'll just have to deal with it and... Yeah, there's not much you can do other than when, they bloom, when they're done blooming, trim it back and continue the watering and maybe a little fertilization. And it uh, sounds like you're going to be okay. You're just going to have a, an ugly rose. Although the flowers can probably take over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're not that ugly, but you know, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. they're still blooming. Yeah. Well, that sounds better than most. I really don't have any yeah. answers. I don't think we can say yeah. do this and it'll right. improve. Well, that's good, and I got you. Right. <laughs> yeah, if you're, uh, you if you're going to plant more roses, consider some of the real hardy types that are on the market now, especially the knockout, knockout. varieties. Uh, the double knockouts are, are very good, mm -hmm. and right. uh, so so yeah. look at some of those. Well, these are these are roses we've had for a long time. We just mm -hmm. hate to see them die. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, yeah, and other than the fact that the knockouts don't have any fragrance, one of them actually does, and that's the yellow one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The yellow. Yeah. One. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you for calling. And we're going to go to the next line. We're going to go to line three. has a question about caladiums. Yes, <clears throat> I've never had caladiums before. Can you hear me? Yeah, we mm -hmm. sure can. Um, and I don't know if they're perennial. I planted about a dozen bulbs, and they're slowly but gradually popping through. I don't know what I should do this fall. Do I have to dig them up? Will they come up again next year? Could you give me some advice? You don't have to dig them up. Well, I will say this. They are not perennial here. They are perennial in some spots, but not in our zone 5. Uh, you will have to dig them up, uh, put them in a box with some sphagnum or something similar, and replant them come next spring. They do not like a lot of sun. They prefer more shade than anything. They are in shade. That's good. Yeah. So uh, that's about the the whole gist of the caladiums is that they are a shade plant, and they do require you digging them up here. Oh, okay. Treat them as a dahlia. They've got to be dug up. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Yeah, they're worth the effort, though. They There's are. nothing really they're like beautiful. them. Beautiful. You just yeah. you, if you're going to go through the effort, though, do what she said and make sure it stays in dry right. peat. Mm -hmm. it, so many people put them away and wash them off and mm -hmm. get them real clean and do all this fancy work and throw them away and they rot. Yeah, and that's uh, you hate to go through that much work and then yeah. do the last part wrong. That's right. All right. Well, we're going to go to a did you know segment. So I want to make sure you don't go away and come back right after this special did you know segment. Definitely mulch. Mulch mm -hmm. is, although this year in the Midwest it's rained so much, yeah. it's not playing the same role it did when it was 100 degrees last year. But mulch, mulch, mulch. So you can't have enough of that. So. And good mulch. Yeah. Good, yeah. good mulch is, <laughs> yeah. is nice. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to go back to the phone and we are going to go to line four with a question about rhubarb. 
Hello? Yeah. Did you have a question about rhubarb? Yes, sir. All right. I'd like to know uh, uh, when should I cut it and how much should I cut out or I just cut it off at the ground or how do I do it? <laughs> I just eat the pie. Yeah. I'm not yeah. really <laughs> cut it to Strawberry eat it or or rhubarb? <laughs> or cut it for, for eating it or what? Yeah, just cut it for eating it. Okay. Has it gone to flower yet? Does it have a big flower stalk coming up in the middle of it? No, no, that's, it's got big stalks coming out of it right now with the leaf on it. Okay, but but nothing in a flower stalk, a spiky type of stalk no, no, coming no. up. So you, you probably still could could use that rhubarb for, for cutting then. Um, you don't want to use it after it's gone to flower. It's not recommended to use it then, but um, so you could, you could cut it and, and use it now. So you just cut it off just above the ground and that's it? Yeah, and take obviously right before the leaf yeah. as well. You don't right. want you just want the the red stem. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, the leaf is poisonous. All green, yeah. it's not red even. Well, and there, there's such thing as green. As long as it, yeah. you make sure it's rhubarb, there's some <laughs> weeds that look yeah. like rhubarb. Not burdock. <laughs> yeah, well, right, exactly. I planted it uh, two years ago. And it sold to me as rhubarb. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's fine. Just use the stem. The leaves are poisonous, so uh, don't consume the leaves. And uh, you're not going to be cutting off the whole plant. You want to leave a good portion of that plant so that it can re rejuvenate mm -hmm. itself. And so just, uh, you know, uh, randomly cut some stems out of there that you can use. Okay, don't cut all the stems off. Just no. randomly cut them. Yeah, right. And just if that flower stalk it. does appear, get rid of it. It just zaps the plant out. Not doesn't serve a useful purpose. Okay, yeah. all right. Zaps the energy. Thank you yeah. much. All right, thank you for calling. We're going to go to another call on line six. Line six, you have a question about green flies. Are you there, line six? Oh, we're going to miss a good question about green flies. Well, we have a, uh, a huge pussy willow bush that's turned into a tree that you all helped to save for, I don't know, two years ago with the Japanese beetles. <laughs> and now we have swarming green back flies. That are nesting in the interior, I, I, and I'm not quite sure what to do about that. <laughs> Where's Jim oh, Appleby? Yeah, no, we need yeah. <laughs> bug people. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, uh, green flies. Are they bottle flies? Metallic green back yeah. small flies that are um, swarming in the interior of the of the, uh, of the bush. They're like a bottle fly, metallic. Mm -hmm. Yes, metallic, yeah. exactly. Uh, the thing is with weeping willows, they have a tendency to attract some strange insects, usually ants, because I used to sit underneath one and always it had, had to brush the ants off when you got out from underneath it. Um, I think they'll probably serve a purpose and do their thing and be gone before you can actually do anything for them. Okay, they're not destroying the, the, no. the plant. No, no, no. Okay. More of a nuisance than they are anything. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to hurt the yeah. hurt the plant. They are a nuisance. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, they are. All right. All right. Well, we we kind of got that one. That's too bad. <laughs> I'll tell Jim we got that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's we're going to go to an, we're going to get the program. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We're going to go to another phone call. We've got line two. A question about peonies. Line two. Um, my question is, my husband and I were checking out the flowers and. Two of the peony bushes on the east side of the house had like a white frost over the where the flowers had been. We were deadheading, and on the, the leaves themselves, and we think it's a fungus of some sort, but we're not sure, and we're worried that it might spread to the other peonies. Yeah, that's that's you know, it's powdery mildew, most likely. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's. Hopefully it's not botrytis, but right. that shouldn't, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty common when, when peonies, the older varieties this time of year, when they start getting, um, when they start aging a little bit, and then you add the humidity that we've had over the last mm -hmm. two and three weeks, mm -hmm. uh, they get it. It's purely ornamental. You, you, you can treat for it. Uh, peonies are known from, a lot of them from kind of dying back in the summer anyway. They never look great come July, August. This year they probably look better than they've ever looked, but... We don't treat for it. You can. There's lots of. You could put a fungicide, but you've got to catch it so early when you see the first signs of it. We uh, actually cut the bushes back. Yeah, I don't think that was necessary, and it's, it's probably 
preferable you don't because any energy that's still there in the leaves will help generate a bigger plant for next year. <laughs> okay. So you're better off leaving that. It, it may drive you crazy and you think that it's dying, but it's really going to be okay. okay. <laughs> so you don't really need to trim it back. I don't think you've heard it, but you certainly right. made it less, you know. Yeah. It's a well-established peony plant. Yeah, you'll, so. you'll be fine. If you, if you yeah. kill a peony, you've, you've really <laughs> made some effort. So. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. All right, thanks for calling. Uh, we're going to actually, you guys have already answered your questions. Bill, I'm going to have you had one more question to go to. We're going to let you answer right, that yeah. before we get more phone calls. Yeah, uh, this was uh, a picture was sent in of a tree in Champaign, Illinois, at the corner of Prospect and University. It's a beautiful tree, and the, the uh, branches, the limbs are touching the ground and probably spreading out in a, a 25 foot uh, radius from that tree. They were wondering what it is, and that's an Osage orange. Uh, some people would refer to it as a hedge apple. It's, uh, it has uh, grapefruit-like uh, fruit, just a little smaller than a grapefruit. Uh, some people use them for uh, decorations uh, during uh, the holidays and paint them silver and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. but, but that is uh, an Osage orange tree. And you, you can't miss that. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. a I don't landmark. Know, did, did, the picture, yeah. did the picture come up of the tree? No, it didn't. But it didn't. If you can yeah. imagine a orange Ripple, you know, rippled softball laying in the middle right. of the street. That's right. what you're seeing, no doubt. You can't miss that. In the wood, we were just talking about when you when you cut the wood, it's a beautiful yeah, orangish yellow color as again, well. Yeah. Right, and uh, and this particular tree, uh, just the way the branches have splayed out, and it's made for many a family photograph, and uh, so it's yeah. a gorgeous, everyone, gorgeous tree. Yeah. Everyone from Champagne's right. aware of that right. tree. Yeah, as soon as the question but, came uh, in, we all knew exactly <laughs> yeah. what tree right. they were talking about. So. I don't know if we have time. We're going to go to uh, a magazine quiz, scientific names, if, if we had something about that. Do, do we have time for that this evening? All right. So we're going to go into a little quiz and see if anybody can answer it. I know we can, but maybe the viewers at home can. <laughs> we'll be right back. y'all get it right? No. I was there. <laughs> I was there. I had it down at least between three. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, Echinacea, this is the time of year for Echinacea, no doubt about it. Gorgeous. All right. We're going to try and get a couple more questions in. We're going to go to line three, who has a question about four o'clock, the annual. Yes. Uh, first, like, Osage Orange is prized by bowmakers for the way it's wood. Mm -hmm. My question is, uh, on the west side of my house, I've been trying to butterfly mix every year. Uh, there's a big house to the west of me that kind of limits, eliminates a little bit of sun. But I have so much problems with weeds. I've tried cream, tried everything. And I was trying to think of a replacement. I've got plenty of shrub roses, plenty of hydrangeas. I think phlox is just too thin. I want to plant a plant that's thick enough to keep the weeds down. And I thought about when I grew up as a child, we had these beautiful four o'clock that came in like four different colors and they would cross breed and they would uh, always self seed. I guess they're an annual and they would, you know, come up with these striped flowers. If you think I could get enough thickness out of there to shade the ground to keep my weeds down? So like I say, I think it's pig weed and I've tried all kinds of uh, methods of other than pulling, which I don't like to do, uh, to keep the weeds down. The old-fashioned four o'clock, are they still around and think that'd be a viable solution? They can really cover the ground. Yeah. I grew up with them on the east side of the house. And That's where mine were. Yeah, I was out there every evening pulling those little peppercorn things off. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they really get thick, and I think they probably might do the job you want them to do. They will. We'll just have to, the first couple of years, actually probably the first year of the first season, you will still have to do some weeding by the time they get prolific and start filling in but yeah uh, yeah they should do it yeah. all right well thank you for calling in we're going to try and squeeze in one more question uh we're going to go to line four who has a comment on some petunias and roses line four you have a, a comment real quickly or a question yeah, we're south here in green up and i have several roses um i just finished my master gardeners class all of my roses have dropped this leaves this year 
And uh, when I sent it in to the U of I, they said it was just too much water too soon, and that's what it was. And as for the petunias, uh, I have a question that might stump you, and I took it in already. I purchased uh, several different hybrids, PPA, PPAF, but I grew my own. The only petunias that haven't died are the ones that I grew myself this year. And they have been in the grounds, containers, hanging baskets, wave climbers, etc. But any petunia that I've purchased this year, no matter where I've purchased it from, have died within like two and a half, three weeks of blooming. But the ones that I grew myself... Well, we're going to have to make this quick. We just have a couple seconds. The ones that I grew myself haven't died. Can you give me any idea whatsoever? What would be the difference between purchasing Well, I can tell you one thing. Congratulations on the good petunias, <laughs> and we look forward to seeing your new varieties. Thanks, everybody, for watching this evening, and we'll see you next week.